Okay, I'm going to continue on the series uh, of this retreat that Nicole and I did, the Zen Buddhist retreat um, in Korea, and look at comparisons and look at uh, what happened. Uh, it was an enlightening experience, but that's what it was supposed to be, and uh, not a large percentage of the people who went there for the experience had the experience. Uh, Nicole and I did, but uh, we've had years of practice in, if I can say it, getting out of our heads, not thinking, uh, not knowing, uh, being okay with doubt, being okay with uh, uncertainty. And it was near the end of the seminar, uh, I was talking to one of the scholars, a guy named Charlie, uh, and he looked pretty distressed, and we were talking, I said, did you get there? He said, no, he said, I didn't get it. I, he said, but, he said, I practiced Zen. He said, I practiced Zen for years. He was from Berkeley at the University of uh, Japanese Zen. He said, but the one thing that we don't do, he says, we don't uh, try to uh, build doubt. Um, and they had this this phenomenon they called Hwadu in it, and I think it had a many meanings. It was not the koan, it was what built within your system, and there was an uncertainty and a doubt. And over the years, uh, I have not seen um, a way to create an enlightening experience with a person, okay? In order to go to any sort of enlightenment, as far as I can see, now this may be an arrogant statement, but again, I've been doing it for 20 years. But what I noticed is Subu, the master in Korea, who also claims to be doing this, and it looks, and I've seen results that he is doing it, uh, is 13 days older than me. Uh, maybe that's, maybe it's the year, maybe it's the time, maybe it's a whole bunch of things, but, but Charlie said that they didn't uh, try to build any doubt within the system, and my koan is, what do you want? Uh, Subul had a different one, and if you played the game rigorously, and uh, I might even say seriously, uh, you started to see that a lot of doubt was created uh, and what that's about is in order to go out of your mind in order to go out into experiencing you you have to doubt everything that you think you know and I think that that was real difficult for the scholars to do they all were fairly certain that they knew what was going on they, I think they thought I don't know what they thought okay let's be really clear about it but the instructions were very simple. Uh, when I do my classes, I ask people, what do you want? And I ask in a, as many different ways as I can. And what I have my audience watch for is curiosity. But what a person will go through is doubt, anxiety, confusion. And they'll go through them very, very deliberately, very heavily, as they try to get to a space of not knowing. Right? Once you get to that space of not knowing, the only thing left that exists is you. And you are fascinating. And I'm going to arrogantly say that I can do in three days, three and a half days, Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, uh, and then a Tuesday night follow-up so we can congeal the information, with people who are extremely curious and people who are extremely desperate, uh, an enlightening experience. Uh, something that changes their lives. I've done it, like I said, for 20 years, and uh, uh, I have more confidence uh, since Simon invited me to Korea to see how it's done in the East. Uh, thanks. I'll keep talking.